Chapter 15, Deep Down in Florida. Your tour bus arrives in Florida and you waste no time escorting Jack to a soundstage. I promise you'll roll out for your new single. Welcome to the set for the music video for Bear. You lead Jack through the stage and he's stunned to see dozens of crew members hard at work. Impressive. I recorded and released Bear two days ago. How were you able to pull this off so quickly? Rit caffeine and thinking about making you happy. I should have known. I'm an inspirational figure after all. And the fans know it. They've been raving over the leaked video. You show Jack your phone and scroll through the notifications. This is Jack's best work since his debut solo album. I total panty dropper. This music is sexy and honest and should be a crime. People are really saying that? Yep, and that's just a small taste of thousands of positive messages. Before you can pull your phone back, he spots a number of missed call notifications. Eight missed calls from Quincy? He must know about the league. Don't worry about Mr. Deacon, that's my job. You might not have that job for much longer. You're putting it all on the line. It's not a big deal. Just worry about your performance. I'll keep us covered until we have something to show Mr. Deacon. Okay, I'll table all worries until after I made the music video of the year. If you can get ready on time, you were scheduled to be in hair and makeup in 15 minutes ago. He shakes his head, a grain returning to his face as, and as he heads to hair and makeup. But as he walks away, your phone vibrates with another call from Mr. Teakin. You pull your phone out, your fingers hovering over the ignore and accept button, knowing how much hangs in the balance. Jack's right. I put it all on the line with this gamble. It could turn out to be a huge mistake. Just then another notification for a positive fan message pops up. This music gives me life. It's the only thing that's gotten me through a rough spot lately. Keep it coming. Hashtag Team Jack. But it's the right move. If anyone can pull this off, it's us. Why don't set? You silence Mr. Deacon's call. As the shoot gets underway, Jack hops off his motorcycle, a backdrop of the night sky behind him. Oh no, you say that I chose this, I bring the pain on myself. Go on and pay me the bag, I'll take it all, the headlines are true. Right on cue, a beautiful model enters the camera frame. Hey, it's her. She's even more perfect than the pictures in her portfolio. But as she licks her lips in frame, you feel drawn out of the fall. Oh no, I can see that shot captioned bleep, and the way she's grinding on him looks like a bear against a tree. Model straddles Jack, but the way she arches her spine reminds you of an undulating inflated arm man. Cut, this isn't working. Monica, I've seen more chemistry between oil and water. Don't blame me. There was hardly any time for rehearsals. Uh, Estrella, run through the choreography with me. Let's show her what it should look like. A tutorial from the manager. What does she know about dance? And it's about the person you're with. I'll show you chemistry. It's not about just hitting your marks. You have to move in tune with the emotion of the song. Your shoot, your rules. Get out there and take it from the top. You jack hit your marks on set, and the track plays. Hope you're ready. If she wears a cowboy hat, diving into the emotion of the song, you lick your lips hungrily, easily showing your desire for Jack. Jack responds, pushing you back against the bike and pressing his hips into you. Keep going, Estrella. Spin around, tease him with your backside. You turn around and grind your ass into his hips, reveling in how free and open you can be here. One more move, think you can land it. Bristling at his challenge, you flip around, eyes brimming with lust, and leap up to straddle him. Nibble on his ear. Oh, hunger radiates through you, and reach behind his head as you pull him close, so you can nibble on his earlobe. I know just the buttons to push. His eyes sink shut, giving in to the pleasure. You have no idea. Your hands grope along each other's bodies, delighted in their warmth. The cameras around you start to fade away. 
I get it now. You can stop swapping fluids. Right. Your body separates from Jack, but your eyes latch onto his hungry gaze. It's like night and day. Nothing about Jack and Monica says sex appeal. And I look at you two and... Estrella, I want you to be my video vixen. Excuse me, I'm right here. You can be gone now. I'm your manager. Playing your love interest would be a conflict of interest. What if I offer you a compromise? I'll shoot it in a way that we rarely see your face, and when we do, I'll swap it with Monica's. Is that good enough for you, Estrella? I know the kind of magic we can make together. <sighs> Fine. I'm surprised Monica isn't going, Wee! Change of plan, Monica. Estrella will do the scene. Unbelievable! You're here from my agent, and yet you're still getting your face put on and paid for not bit doing whatever needs to be done. Monica storms off sad. I get Estrella to wardrobe. Time is money, people. You slip away from wardrobe change and return, looking the part in a revealing getup. Do I look the part? You turn heads as you saunter over to your mar at Jack Cranes' neck to get a good look at you. The manager has a video vixen in her after all. I've been waiting for the right time to unleash her. Let's take it from the top and action! You say that I choose this, I'll bring pain on myself. Go on and paint me the bag, I'll take it. All the headlines are true. You walk into the camera frame and come up behind him with hunger in your eyes. He turns to face you and takes your ass in his hands. But instead of focusing on his hands, you're hyper aware of the HD lens zoomed in on your curves and the boom mic operating stand over your shoulder. Is there a trick to forgetting where you're being watched and recorded? You did it just a minute ago. He leans in and whispers in your ear. Close your eyes. We're on a Florida beach, sand under our feet. The only thing on your mind is where you want to be touched next. As this track plays, you let your eyes drift shut, blocking out everything except for the grip his fingers have on your ass. Hold me so close I can smell you. His hands crawl up your back, pulling you in hard against him, and his intoxicating scent fills your mind. Call me what you want. I know I'm a hot mess, but you can't judge. Your surroundings fade away. That's all you can picture is the ocean breeze blowing past your faces and the sun shining down on your bodies. Come on, strip me naked. I know you won't resist. You rip his vest off and throw it at the camera. Yes, clot him. It's now or never. You push him back against the bike and slip your hands under his shirt, pushing it up to reveal more and more of a skim. What do you see now? I see myself crawling on top of you as the waves crash into us, our naked bodies rubbing against each other. The camera zooms in as you lift your shirt over his head and throw it behind you as heart pounds with desires and eyes meet yours. The chemistry is hot! You call me imperfect, but your eyes don't seem to disappoint it. You scan his body, resisting yours to jump on him right then and there. I'm far from disappointed. You hardly acknowledge the crew moving in for the next mark as Jack takes your face in his hands, the anticipation swelling in you. He satisfies your burning desire with a fiery kiss that sends shockwaves through you. Forgetting where you are, your hands drop down in between his legs and covertly tease over his bulge with your fingertips. Cut! The spell breaks and you're left gazing down at his body, breathless, your senses screaming to dive back in, but you manage to pull yourself away as the crew flurries around you to set up for the next shot. Phenomenal! The passion! The hunger! This is working so much better! Jack gazes in your eyes as the emotions come down. How was your time on the beach? It was a nice warm-up. We may need to pick up where we left off later. I believe that can be arranged. Good, because I already have a few more ideas. Oh, let's keep the magic happening. It's time for Jack's close-ups. You get back into your position, your body looming over Jack because he leans against the mic. So the camera will only be taking shots of you, right? Yes. Your expression turns mischievous and you drop your hand to his inner thigh, gently running your fingers higher and higher. Oh, you sly action! 
the track kicks in, Jack has to switch back to the lyrics. You say that I choose this, I bring the pain on myself. Don't tell me you're distracted. You feel a rush of power, your teasing hand leaving Jack gasping for breath as the camera comes in from a new angle. Go on, paint me the bad guy, I'll take out all the headlines are true. You want to know how tired I am of saying these lines at this point? Jack turns the tables on you and takes hold of your wrist. Guy Jack's hands to my eyes. He brings his hands to your hips and he gets the message, grabbing, quickly grabbing at your ass. Mm. Come on, strip me naked, I know you won't resist. He squeezes harder, pulling you with hunger, knowing the back of your head is to the camera. You bite down on his collar. Wasn't his shirt supposed to be off, by the way? Pleasure floods your senses as you hear Jack's heart beat faster and faster against you, and your fingers drop back down in between his legs. Take your shots. Call me spoiled. Call me spoiled, one look and you'll... You cop his bulge in your hand, careful to watch his face as he squirms. Melt. Heat floods through you as he shivers under your control. Cut as a rap on the shoot for bear. You hold his gaze, his chest heaving against you. Nice job, you two. It's one of the most convincing performances I've ever seen. You break Jack's gaze and suppress your shock as you realize that what you did is just in front of a dozen or so crew members. All that matters to me is whether my client is happy. Are you satisfied, Jack, or do we need another take? He grins, barely able to get his words out. Oh, I'm very satisfied with the shot. Later that evening, it's a total madness backstage as everyone prepares for Jack's show. Let's get this uh, new mic check, please. The last one gave me a shock so bad, my heart is still pounding. As the engineers gave equipment another look, Jack comes up behind you and rests his arm on your shoulder. You're taking care of everything today. Well, everything but yourself. He wipes a bead of sweat from your cheek. His fingers cool to your face, and suddenly you feel a, like a dehydrated mess. <sighs> it's just some evening heat. It's not a big deal. I'll be damned if I lose the best manager I've ever had to the South Beach humidity. He gestures for one of the costume designers. Get Estrella here something cool to wear from the show rack. Costume designer nods and returns, holding up a strappy bikini and so wrong. You can't help but fight back a smile. Are you really concerned about my health, or you just wanted me looking hot for your oceanfront concert? Hmm, can it be both? I'll accept. You hold the bikini up by one of the strings. Now I just have to figure out how to get into this skimpy thing. He grins. I could lend you a hand. Uh, I thought you'd never ask. He eases the clipboard out of your hands and curves you away. Into this makeshift dressing room in a tent on the sandy beach. Two minutes to show! Where the hell is Jack? Uh, you heard the woman. There's no time to waste, now strip. Oh, he's so bossy. You turn around and lift your shirt. His warm hands immediately grazing against your shin, skin as he pulls it the rest of the way off. Before you can reach for your jeans, Jack's fingers grip around your waist, undoing the top button and tugging them down to your ankles. You weren't kidding about wasting no time. Quick wardrobe changes are part of the job description. You hold up the swimsuit, perplexed by the straps. Jack takes your shoulders and spins you around to face him. In seconds, he's slipping it on. So, do you approve? He steps back to give your body a good hard look, his eyes lingering on your bust. I definitely won't have a problem picking you out in the crowd wearing that. He takes the stage, and you get your first look at the crowd. The beach is lined with fans as far as you can see. This crowd might be the biggest crowd all tour. I'm sorry, are they all swimming? Because it looks like they're all swimming. Hello, Miami! Is there... Is there, like, concerts where everyone's swimming? Because, ugh... Thank you for having me. I've got a wonderful show for you tonight. Come on, strip me naked! Oh, God. I know you won't resist. You listen closely to the growing number of people singing. They're shouting the lyrics from the leaked song. Are we ready to get this party started? 
the unconnected mix of lyrics being shouted for him into a single chant amongst the crowd. We want bear! We want bear! I'm hearing a special request. He admires the crowd, his fans passionately demanding his newest song to find you off stage and shrugs. Jack, we want bear. We want bear. We want bear. Jack smiles before nodding to his band. You heard him. Let's give the people what they want. The band begins opening chords and a roar ripples through the beach. <sighs> I swear this better be the last time. You say that I choose this. I bring the pain on myself. Go on and paint me. The bad guy, I'll take it. All the headlines are true. Yeah, sing it, Jack. The fans go feral. Jack feeds off their energy, pointing his mic to the audience so they can help him sing the lyrics. Come on, strip, be naked. I know you won't resist. Take your shots, call me spoiled. One look in your mouth. Jack glides around the stage, his body perfectly in sync to the beat, his singing radiating more passion and joy than you've seen in years. Maybe I'm a pretty good manager after all. You sway your hips, getting lost in his performance, but then your phone vibrates. It's Mr. Deacon. Listening to the perfect performance you helped create, you take a deep breath and then answer. It's about time you answered. I've been calling you for days. I've been busy. Save the excuses. I asked you to fix Jax's life, not make it worse. And recording and releasing music without permission counts as worse. If you genuinely want to see Jax succeed, new music is exactly what's going to turn things around for him. You flip your phone around and turn on the camera to give him a glimpse of Jax's stellar performance. They say talk is cheap, but you'd pay top dollar for these lips. Look, the crowd is massive. Look what he can do when he's got the right support. So you've gotten fans to gather at a beach. It's the middle of summer in Florida. That's not very difficult. It's much more than that, Mr. Deacon. Music sues Jack. Taking that away has been hurting him this whole time. Mr. Deacon is silent for a moment. Be that as it may, there are rules and protocols in place for a reason. Breaking them has to have consequences. Mr. Deacon, before you make any rash decisions, remember the years of loyalty Jack has shown you. He's been signed to Infinity since he was a teenager. Doesn't that count for anything? This isn't a decision I've come to lightly. I could have pulled the plug months ago. But you didn't. You believed in us and were about to reward that belief. I have a company to run, and I can't make excuses for your behavior to the shareholders anymore. At their behest, Jack's upcoming album is suspended. Album? Jack's only recorded one song. No one outside the road team knows we've, we're even planning an album. You think back to the leaked bus audio incident on Chatty Cathy Live, and the host had an audio clip from a private conversation on the bus. I didn't find proof, but the whole thing had Gene's name written all over it. If Mr. Deacon knows, then he must have been behind it. But how? He has to have a spy on the road team. That's not all. Any further performance of Bear without our approval will incur legal action against you and Jack. Snap back to focus, a plan quickly forming. I clearly won't get anywhere by arguing with you, sir. I'm sorry you feel this is your only option, but I understand. Hmm. Well, that's the smartest thing you've said all tour. I trust you'll relay the message to Jack. He hangs up and you look at Jack on stage singing his heart out as the crowd dances along with the music. I won't let them stop us. Gene may have been plotting against us this whole time, but I can plot back. You rush over to your tour bus and pull out your work laptop. The leaked recording was originally sent from an IR ad email address, which means it should be in the directory. You search for a generic email address in the Infinity Records directory. It returns one person, Salas, Jack Security Guard. No, Salas, how could you? You close the laptop, storm out of the bus and search for Salas and find him on duty around the equipment staging area. Hey boss, shouldn't you be on the beach enjoying the concert? You link the audio to Chatty Cathy Live. I don't know what you're talking about. Salas, I'll give you a chance to explain yourself. 
He avoids eye contact, a giddy, guilty expression washing over him. There's not that much to explain. Oh, I think there is. His face falls. I never intended for it to go this far. I gave TMI a few harmless tips here and there to pay off some deaths. But then Gene found out. He threatened to tell Jack if I didn't agree to spy on him. You know Jack would have given you the money if you'd asked. I was too ashamed. I didn't know anyone or want anyone to know even as I kept digging myself into that hole. You know you're going to have to tell him about this. I will. I've put it off for far too long. And please, if there's anything I can do to make this right, I'll happily do it. Not unless you're familiar with shareholder negotiations. I can't say that I know about negotiations, but I've often seen one of the shareholders in Gene's office. His name is Lawrence Briggs. He lives nearby. The address in the directory. Hmm. If I know Gene, he has the guy under his thumb. Maybe I can squeeze some intel out of him. The squeezing may go smoother with some muscle at your side. Not to mention I owe you one. You look up at Salas, realizing his towering frame, massive biceps, could give you an advantage in negotiations. Okay. You better be up for the mission. I've been tackling bad guys and kicking ass for years. I got this. You climb aboard the bus, and Salas is settles in the driver's seat. The roar of the ignition sounds. Step on the gas. We need to get back before the concert's over. Could have just taken an Uber. <laughs> you arrive at a stately home and ring the doorbell. Moments later, the shareholder himself opens the door. Mr. Briggs, I apologize for stopping by unannounced, but we have business to discuss. I'm Estrella Villanueva. Jack Kennedy's. He starts to laugh, bemused. You can save your breath. I know who you are. Then, you know why I'm here. To yap at me like an annoying chihuahua. You need to learn to take no for an answer. He moves to slam the door in your face. No. But, Salas stops it with a strong and meaty hand. The show horror's demeanor instantly switches, and you shoot him a smug smile. I just want a friendly chat. I can be a pleasant house guest, or I can ruin your night. Salas steps in closer, towering over Mr. Briggs. It's your choice. Mr. Briggs nervously gulps and steps aside. Right, this way, please. You settle into the living room, take a seat. Salas remains standing in his, his intimidating shadow looming over Mr. Briggs. Let me cut to the chase. I know you're in cahoots with Gene. What I need to know is why. Of course. He avoids eye contact and takes a sip of his drink, sitting on the coffee table. Salas, did I stutter because Mr. Briggs here doesn't seem to understand the question? Mm, if I didn't know any better, I'd say he was buying time, racking his brain for the most believable lie he can come up with. Oh, Mr. Briggs, I really hope that's not what you're doing. Because Salas here doesn't take kindly to liars. Tell him what happened to the last guy who lied to you. Let's just say, they're not a problem anymore. It's not what I, I, no one said anything about lying. He nervously clears his throat and sets his drink back down. Look, I'm sorry you don't have the approval you're hoping for, but Jack's antics have cost the shareholders a, a lot of money. So, Gene came to me, promising to stabilize uh, Infinity Record stock. I was happy to work with him. Help out exactly how? Uh, Gene alone doesn't have the power to block Jack from recording a new album if he did. Uh, I'm sure he would have done that so long ago. Uh, so he asked me to put Jack's ability to record it to a vote. Do everything I could to persuade the other shareholders to vote no. I knew it. Gene... Never had faith in Jack. He wants his career to crash and burn. He'd prefer to say that it's time for new artists to shine. Meaning Veronica. Exactly. And you and all the shareholders were happy to go along with it. It wasn't hard. All the stakeholders had reservations about Jack's image and brand safety. Of course it's not personal. It's just business. 
I watch Mr. Briggs shift uncomfortably in his chair as sick as the whole thing is. You can't help but feel power course through you. Thank you for a productive meeting, Mr. Briggs. You stand up to leave your presence quietly towering over the shareholder. Oh, before I go, let me leave you with something, some helpful advice to remember. This conversation never happened. Alice grips his shoulder and squeezes tightly. Gene won't hear a thing from me. Thank you for your cooperation. You and Salas see yourselves out. I'm impressed. You handle that like a true boss. Oh, you haven't seen anything yet. If Jack's so-called bad image is f the flimsy reasoning for all this, then I'm going to have to kick Operation Redeem Jack into high gear. A smile fueled by amusement and determination comes over your face. And what better way to do that and with a roast. I swear to God, you think small and minded. All right, before we begin this roast of this book, thank you all for watching. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Head down the description. Plenty of things to check out, ways to support. Please consider doing that, because pretty much, let's put it this way. I'm a content creator of 12 years. I've been doing choices since literally no one else was. I do voicing, I do reading, and I pretty much get the chapters up ASAP, and I make sure to legitimately spend diamonds, as well as spend cash on VIP every single month. So it'd be greatly appreciated if you would consider supporting the content in any way whatsoever. Uh, aside from that, there's also p pretty much over 4,000 videos on the channel, so please consider checking those out as well. Other than that, so, uh, like I said, she doesn't think big. So, yeah, no, you can go ahead and do your Redeem Jack thing, but you could also play to Salus still has the ear of Jean. You play Salus against Gene, you leak, but while you're doing some things, you literally leak that you're going to be doing this or that or, or, or whatever, right? And have the Dean um, being whispered to by Gene, clearly, and Gene doing a bunch of shenanigans, and it's going to seem uh, show Mr. Deacon that Gene is not to be trusted, and it's going to use misinformation to your advantage and Jean's disadvantage. You can continue doing whatever the hell you else you want, and thus also it gets Gene off your back. He's focused on other things and misdirection. It's not that hard. Hey, look, I know. I could be a writer. Oh, wait, I was. And, you know, life happens. So, you know, it's just, I again, I come up with these crazy ideas, literally and figuratively. You can give me any game, any book, any story, anything in the world, and I can run with it. And I can come up with like a, sh a shop work of things that you can do to benefit quality of life, etc. in literally five minutes or less. And that's how fast I did that. I actually did it in less than a minute. So other than that, thanks for watching. Catch you all later. Peace out.